Hi, my name is Dan Eisenberg, and I'm representing this research team for our paper in the new journal of physics called The Optimization and Resilience of Supply-Demand Networks. And what we do is we study the resilience of infrastructure systems. We do it in a th theoretical way by representing these infrastructure systems as networks. And so what we're looking at in this specific paper are how things like primary school services or government services such as uh, university or even fire and rescue, the locations of these services within an urban system provide a service and how that relates to the demanders who might need it at any moment in time. And that we treat that as a network and we try and optimize the, the relationships between the demand and the supply. And, and uh, that's actually a really difficult thing to do, so we use these theoretical networks to try and do it. And so the most simplified way that I can describe the model that we use here is in this, these four nodes. You'll see there's one supplier and three demanders. And so flow throughout this network would be in this way. <clears throat> and if we have demand of one, whether it's a packet or a service at each individual demander, uh, we would, might have this much flow over each link. And so what we do is we take these simple flow situations where there's a certain amount of load on each link and we try and blow it up to larger networks. So in this specific paper, we're looking at 1,000 nodes with 3,000 links. The edge capacity is based off of this steady state flow situation. So the maximum load on links uh, might be 3 halves or 1 half. And then you multiply that by some factor alpha to determine the total capacity that would happen over that link. And using this simplified system with many, many demanders and many, many suppliers, we look at different kinds of dynamics. In particular, in this paper, we're looking at cascading failure dynamics from a single link loss and how that might lead to different flow patterns without the system and then perhaps other links failing and leading to different cascading failures within the system. Also, we're looking at the growth of the network. So we had two different growth scenarios and we looked at how if we add new demanders into the system, how that would relate to the flow in the system and what the flow over those links and capacity of those links might be. So I'm going to go over two different uh, example solution, uh, results from this work. Um, the first result is if we have an optimized network, we actually find that certain links are redundant and they don't have any flow in the steady state situation. We want to look at if we had those redundant links in or took them out, how that would affect the overall dynamics of cascading failures in the system. What we found is if you actually remove the redundant links, which are the black lines, and, or instead of leaving them in, which are the red lines, you have smaller cascades and slower cascades, which is a more resilient system. It gives you more time to respond to failures. It gives you more ways of dealing with different kinds of losses within your network. Also, we looked at multiple growth scenarios. One of them was if we add in a whole cluster of nodes at once, which is kind of representative of a new um, housing development in the urban system, uh, entering your city, for example. And how would you optimize the location of suppliers relative to these new clusters? We found that if you include both the cluster and the global dynamics of all the suppliers in the system in your optimization scheme, you actually lower the amount of total load you have over all the links providing the service, which is really good for the resilience of the system. It has uh, slower cascades and smaller cascading failures throughout the system. So this is theoretical work using these networks, but it's a great place to build off of and look at how urban systems grow and evolve. And what we're looking to do is try and include new types of networks, like spatial networks, which represent roads or power grids, as well as different kinds of uh, optimization schemes for how suppliers should be put into the system. For example, a primary school might be optimized based off of trying to keep the shortest distance between the supply and demand where a fire at a station might be optimized based off of how um, you want to have that specific service be provided anywhere within this, in the network at any given moment because they need access to it. So with that, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy our